Hello everyone, this is the Silent Canvas and welcome uh, to our very first YouTube video. Uh, on this channel we will be focusing on 3D modeling tutorials uh, basically used in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, we will also teach you uh, several other techniques including digital design and hand sketching basics. Uh, so like, share and subscribe to this page if you are into this sort of thing. Now for today's tutorial we will be focusing on uh, the fidget spinner. Now for those of you who don't know, uh, the fidget spinner is a toy that gained traction a couple of months ago. Uh, everyone was raving about this new toy and dubbed as a stress buster, almost everyone uh, from little kids to uh, the senior citizens, uh, everyone was seen playing around with this toy and we thought uh, why not give it a swing and model the same in Fusion 360. Now Fusion 360 uh, is a design tool that gives the user the best of both worlds that is uh, CAD as well as uh, the 3D modeling side all wrapped in one package and if you're a student affiliated to university uh, you can use the software licensed for free. I will link uh, the page in the show description, uh, you can check it out over there. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial and uh, through the course of this tutorial we will also see uh, the various features that uh, we will use to model this fidget spinner. Uh, so when you open uh, Fusion 360 for the first time, you will see uh, a blank workspace here. This is where uh, the modeling and sketching will take place. Now when it comes to fidget spinners, uh, the fundamental component uh, that we have is uh, the bearing. The bearing gives it uh, the center of gravity and also gives it the weight uh, required to give you those enticing spins. So when it comes to the specifications of this bearing, uh, the most commonly used bearing for a fidget spinner is the 608 series bearing. Uh, now in your fusion design, if you want to use one of these bearings, there are three ways to do it. The first uh, way uh, that is simple and straightforward is to insert a Make Master Car component here. Uh, this is a web store built straight into Fusion 360 and you can visit uh, their online store and they have 3D files for all of their components. You can download them and import them into your Fusion design. Uh, another way to uh, get this component into your design or get any uh, sort of a specific component into your design is to model it yourself. Uh, to model a 608 bearing, uh, we have modeled this one ourselves. And if you want us to do a tutorial on that, you can comment in the comment section down below and we will work on the same. Uh, the third way to import or to include this component into your design is to visit a design repository or design resource website such as GrabCAD. Uh, they have millions of uh, relevant designs available for download. So you can head up there and look up the bearing that you need and download it and import it into your fission design. Now once you've got this uh, bearing in place, uh, let's start sketching out the fidget spinner. To do that, let's head to the create sketch option in the model works, uh, workspace. So we do create sketch and select the XZ plane. This should take you to the top view right here. Now while sketching uh, our fidget spinner, we really don't want this uh, bearing to obstruct uh, the view or obstruct the workspace. So to hide uh, this component, just head to the component uh, in the browser area here and click on the little light bulb glowing here. Now once you click that, you will see that this model or this component has become invisible for the time being. To reactivate it, you can just click the light bulb again and you'll see that it comes right back into place. So for now, let me hide this and let's start the sketching. Now the diameter for the bearing used in fidget spinners is usually 22 millimeters. So we're gonna have uh, the base circle of 22 millimeters first. Now to create this base circle, head to the sketch drop down menu here and let's create a circle so select the center diameter circle. Now you can either do this or just uh, type C on your keyboard and you will get the same option. So let's head to the center of the workspace, drag out the circle and enter 22 millimeters. So this is the base circle where the ball bearing is going to fit right into place. 
Now, to create the lobes of the fidget spinners, we need to create a, a set of circles around the base circle. Now, for this tutorial, we will be creating the simple three lobe fidget spinner, so we will need three lobes uh, around the base circle. So, to start creating the lobes, let's first create another uh, circle of uh, 22 millimeters. Uh, this uh, 22 millimeters on the lobes is because we also have individual bearings on these lobes. So since the bearings are 22 millimeters each, we will have to create uh, the uh, the area to place uh, those bearings on the lobes. So first off, let's begin with the center diameter circle. Uh, you can tap C on your keyboard, and along the axis, just create another circle of 22 millimeters again. Uh, now we didn't really pay attention to the center to center distance between these circles uh, and that's very important when you're constructing a design you know you have uh, specific measurements for each component and uh, for this uh, particular design the center to center distance between these circles that is the base circle and the top lobe is 30 millimeters uh, so to specify that dimension we will use uh, the feature called the sketch dimension feature which you'll find in the sketch drop down menu here you can also tap D on your keyboard and you will get the same option. Uh, so once the sketch dimension tool is selected, you can select uh, the center of the top circle, select the center of your base circle, and if you move your mouse outwards, you'll see that it gives you the current dimension or the current distance between those two points. Now click once on your workspace in the editable window, enter 30 millimeters you'll see that the circle has moved down to give us that center to center distance now with the uh, the top uh, circle created let's offset the circle by three millimeters to start creating the body now offsetting is basically creating uh, a copy of the parent uh, sketch either outside or inside of it at a specific distance so for this design we're going to offset this uh, top circle by three millimeters outside. So to do that, select the uh, circle, hit the sketch drop down, and choose the offset uh, command. Uh, you can also tap O on your keyboard, and you will get the same result. So with the offset selected, you will see that it automatically creates an offset of the uh, selected sketch at one millimeters. Uh, so since we need three millimeters in the editable window, just uh, type in three millimeters. And you'll see that we've created an offset of uh, the top circle. Now, since we have three lobes uh, of the fidget spinner, we need to create two more instances of this uh, lobe uh, design. Uh, one, uh, the primary or the most rudimentary way of doing that is to actually uh, manually sketch out these components, but you are never guaranteed uh, a precision. So to get a more precise uh, outcome, we will use the circular pattern option in the sketch drop down so choose the circular pattern option and in the window you'll see that it's asking you to select the objects that you want to pattern the objects here are the top circles uh, the center point is the center of the base circle because we want to rotate or pattern it along the center of the base and you'll see that immediately by default you will get three copies of uh, the lobes you can experiment and uh, change the quantity uh, of these lobes as per your taste but uh, for this uh, tutorial we are going to go for three lobes so with the quantity set to three uh, just press ok and you'll have these three uh, lobes ready for use now uh, the next step in sketching this fidget spinner is to now join these uh, lobes together using arcs. If you notice uh, that the fidget spinner has this sort of arc pattern that joins uh, the lobes together. So to do that, let's head to the sketch drop down uh, and in the arc option, we will choose a three point arc. And construct a three point arc between any two lobes of your choice. And uh, you can eyeball this process. And yeah. Now, once you're satisfied uh, with the position of your three point arc, uh, let's add a few constraints. Now, the reason we are adding constraints to this three point arc is because right now it is free to move. You see, it can enter the circles, go behind the circles. Uh, we don't want that. We want the arc to remain where it is, and that is tangent to these circles. 
So to do that, uh, we will go to the sketch palette uh, option or sketch palette window, click on the tangent constraint and choose the arc and uh, the top circle. You'll see that it is now tangent uh, to the top circle. Now repeat the process uh, for the bottom as well. Select the arc and select the bottom circle and you'll see that the tangent constraint has now appeared for both the points. Now if you don't want uh, the uh, arc to be uh, so close to the base circle you can now click and move the arc as per your requirement and you'll see that it still remains tangent to uh, the two circles. So I'm happy with this position. Uh, so I'm just going to deselect it by clicking anywhere on the workspace. Now we need uh, two more instances of uh, this very same arc and again for maximum precision we are going to use the circular pattern option. So head to the sketch drop down in the circular pattern select the object as the three point arc, the center point as the, uh, the center of the base circle and with the quantity set to three say OK and you'll see that we've created the basic uh, body of our fidget spinner. Now once you're satisfied with the shape of your fidget spinner, let us uh, stop the sketch, head to the home view and you'll see that this is the body of our fidget spinner. Now you can switch on the rod or uh, the uh, bearing component here and you'll see that it fits right into place uh, due to the 22mm circle that we had created before. Now with the uh, setup as follows, you are now ready to extrude uh, your fidget spinner. So to do that, press E on your keyboard or head to the create drop down and extrude. Select these bodies and in the extrude window, we will select uh, the direction of extrusion as symmetric and the overall length uh, to be seven millimeters. Now we don't want a taper angle in this extrusion, so we're not going to do that. And in the operation, it's going to be a new component. With these uh, options selected, press OK, and you will have your fidget spinner body ready for use. So if you orbit this figure, you'll see that the bearings fit exactly. Uh, in place now <clears throat> the next step is to create instances of uh, this bearing and fit them in place uh, in, in these slots that we've made so if you remember the center to center distance between the two circles was 30 millimeters so we're going to select this component and perform the copy paste operation. So if you're using a Windows PC, you can uh, just tap uh, Control C and Control V to copy and paste it. And if you're using a Mac, you can just uh, press Command C and Command V. And you'll see that it creates a component or a copy of this component right above the parent body. Uh, now we want to move this up along the Z uh, direction here and we have to move it up by minus 30 millimeters and say OK and you'll see that this uh, instance of the parent uh, component fits right into place now to speed up the process uh, let's just head to the circular pattern and this time since we are in the model environment we'll go to the create drop down the pattern and circular pattern now it's going to ask you for the object that you want to pattern. So if you want to select this object, just select the instance uh, in the browser. Because sometimes if you raw select uh, the object that you want, you may miss out on a few bodies. So selecting the component from here, the browser gives you uh, the whole uh, whole body. And for the axis of rotation, we are going to choose uh, the y axis, or in layman's terms, uh, the green axis. So with that selected, uh, quantity set to 3, say OK, and you are now ready with your basic fidget spinner uh, design. Now the last step in uh, this uh, design or modeling process is to add fillets to this body. To do that, uh, press F on your keyboard or head to modify and fillet. Select the two edges, the top edge here and the bottom edge, and start 
uh, filleting this body as uh, per your taste uh, so I'm gonna put a a 2 2.2 uh, millimeter fillet on the body and I'm gonna say okay uh, you can of course uh, experiment with the fillet uh, as per your taste uh, since I found uh, the 2.2 millimeter fillet to be uh, what I want or what I imagine to be I've gone for 2.2 millimeters so as you can see we have now created uh, the uh, fidget spinner in Fusion 360 the last step is uh, to render the same so head to uh, the render environment to do that just click on the model environment here it gives you an option to change your workspace head to the render workspace and here we are now there are two types of uh, render options available in fusion 360 uh, the first one is the in canvas render where uh, the, the tool fusion 360 makes use of your GPU uh, or the inbuilt graphics of your uh, PC or laptop and renders this model using uh, ray tracing uh, the next option uh, or the better option is the cloud render so if you are on an uninterrupted uh, internet connection you could uh, use the cloud render feature and render this model in full HD if you desire so for uh, this tutorial let's just uh, do a quick in canvas render so you get the basic idea of what I'm talking about so to assign materials to this fidget spinner uh, let's head to the appearance tab here or just press A on your keyboard and you will get uh, the appearances tab on the right hand side the appearance tab uh, in Fusion 360 is pretty detailed and uh, very easy to use since they have uh, used uh, the general nomenclature for the different materials available so for this uh, I'm going to go for a simple plastic fidget spinner uh, I'm going to make it an opaque uh, say a classic hot rod red uh, fidget spinner so with that assigned uh, I can now choose the view in which I want to render this uh, model uh, just head to the view cube on the top right hand side of fusion 360 and just choose uh, the view that you want to render this model in so I'm going to go for a basic uh, top view render so with uh, everything selected uh, you can now head to the in canvas render option here click it once and it should start the ray tracing operation as you can see the ray tracing is uh, underway uh, it does take uh, time uh, depending on the GPU that you have in your laptop of course the cloud render gives you uh, much better details but uh, it all depends on how fast or slow your net is and how uh, uh, free or how occupied the rendering queue is on the Autodesk cloud uh, so that's it that's it for this tutorial uh, this is uh, the official uh, rendered version of uh, the fidget spinner that we've made uh, you can go crazy with uh, yours uh, assign different materials and chart different designs and let us know how uh, this tutorial helped you guys create your fidget spinner in the comment section down below so until next time goodbye